So tomorrow, it's Women's Day, of course, and so our personal finance hotshot, it's a Maya Fisher French, uh, focusing accordingly. And why wouldn't she as well? Women being encouraged to uh, take charge and become financially independent. But here is the big but. Here's the problem. It's a survey by Debtbusters has revealed that four out of five respondents say they're suffering from financial stress, lower income earners also one of the most stressed and high income earners showing unsustainable levels of debt. And thankfully, we have Maya Fisher French, financial journalist, uh, on how to try and make sense of all of this. Joining us from Cape Town. Morning to you, Maya. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, over indebtedness and also how to be more financially independent when you don't have, even have enough money to be in debt. But before we get to that, you just won Consumer Financial Journalist of the Year Award. If I had a round of applause soundtrack in the background, I'd be playing. And congratulations, by the way. Just very quickly, uh, tell me about that because I think so many people trust you uh, here on ENCA. But you're so much more than just talking to me every week, isn't it? How do you feel? Yeah, it was wonderful, um, Gareth. Really, really a, a huge compliment um, to receive that award. It's, it's an award, um, it's, it's actually Sunlum's done this for, I think it's like 45 years or something. They have these Financial Journalist of the Year awards. And I have one again on the um, consumer financial education category. Um, so yes, it, it's a real accolade and, and it does. It, I suppose it gives you some sort of sense that you're doing the right thing every single day. <laughs> yeah, certainly every single day. And here on ENC as well. So congrats, Maya. Very seriously, congrats to you. Uh, and it's because of the kind of advice that you give every week here on the show that you're getting this kind of recognition. So let's, let's add to uh, the annals of Maya Fisher French for a second, the accolades here. Because what we've got here in, in the intro I was talking about now, we've got two different problems in South Africa. Well, we have lots of problems, but the two I'm focusing on is is the people who and the women specifically who are not making enough money to save to invest to become financially mm -hmm. independent then the other side of the scale is you have those who might have enough money but are over indebted where would you like to kick this one off this morning i think it's important you know um gareth whenever we do women's day talks around money people say oh but isn't money gender neutral and I think it's, it's really important that we highlight how financially vulnerable women are, especially in South Africa. So the facts remain that women earn less than men by at least 30%. Um, women mostly do the unpaid work in the home. So this is childcare. And interestingly enough, also looking after parents. Women are more likely to be looking after elderly parents than men are. Um, and just another stat, you know, Old Mutual Savings Investment Monitor found that around 50% of mothers in South Africa are raising their children alone, and only 20% receive regular support from the father. So that is having a huge impact on a woman's ability to save for the future. And then, Gareth, we are we, we hit again by statistics because we live longer than men by about seven years. So to give you an, an idea that if you had to save 15% of your income for a time, and I would have to save 18% in order to have the same sustainable retirement income because I'm going to live longer. So yet women have less money to yeah, save for investments yeah. um, and their retirement. So it's actually not surprising that, that what we find is that most women are left financially destitute in, in their later years. So this is actually quite a crisis, and it's a very, very you know, gender-based actually crisis. And I suppose you and I can one day, when we have a lot more time, Maya, we can go into why you think it is that women are still earning less in this day and age. I mean, for heaven's sake, it's 2023. Uh, let, let's be honest, we should all be on an equal playing field without a doubt. But today's focus is going to be how do you try and help with all those stats in mind? How does a woman in our country try and get on top of everything that she needs to do? I think probably the most important thing is financial independence in the sense of having your own bank account. And I'm talking obviously specifically if a woman's in a relationship, um, you know, she must have her own bank account and her own credit record, um, even if she's taken time out to raise the children. And she must have her own investments. She mustn't just sort of rely on the husband. We see such devastation in divorce. Um, it's quite interesting to me that most divorces happen about 10 years into marriage. Um, and in bulk of the times there are children under the age of 18. And if a woman's only starting then at around the age of 40 to save for her future, then she's really, really on the back foot. So I, I would really encourage young women before they're having children to really start investing. Um, and then when they do have children, to not cash in those investments, because we mm -hmm. often do that. We think, oh, we'll cash it in, we'll help pay for the maternity leave. 
You, that, you need to let that money grow for you, allow the power of, of compounding to work for you because that is where your financial independence will sit. Um, and Gareth, also I really want to encourage women to learn about managing their own money. Research has shown, and this research has shown all around the world, that women are actually better money managers. We actually do better with investments. Um, that can go into a whole reason why, it's a whole psychological reason. But we often lack the confidence to invest. So we kind of are scared to do it. But if we educate ourselves and learn about investing, we can, we can really, really empower ourselves. So I think it is about taking ownership of this. So it is, there's obviously a very real issue about the lack of money, and this is a real society issue that we're facing. But with the little bit of money you have, you've also got to not, you've got to put yourself first. And I think as, as, as mothers, we often tend to also help our, our children, help our family before we help ourselves. And I think, mm. I always think of the, the analogy on the airplane, put the oxygen on yourself first. I think that's, that's what I would love to encourage women um, to do. Put, that's it, this woman's day, put the oxygen on yourself first. Now, if you can't help yourself, you can't help uh, the others on the investing as well. Uh, let the money grow. Don't let it go because you'd be surprised how quickly it can vanish. Maya Fisher French, I'm sure we'll talk again, uh, if not tomorrow on the show, um, no doubts, uh, in uh, the build up and also what will be at Women's Day tomorrow as well. Fascinating stats from uh, Maya. When you look at it like that, you really do get a sense that there is uh, just huge gaps uh, still when it comes to gender issues and not just financial but other issues as well but financially in this case uh, gender gaps between uh, male and female here in South Africa.